They're against her. He didn't see beyond his own two eyes. The reason they're against her is because they're for her. Because they didn't ask her the real question. Which is, do you take any responsibility for the humanitarian crisis that is engulfing the whole world? That would have been the question to ask. So instead they focus on the email scandals. It's the same with Bill Clinton. Why do you think they focused on Monica Lewinsky? Because they didn't want to focus on the war that he was brewing. Do you understand? I remember I told you that years ago. I was here on radio then. I know how the game is played by these guys. I know how the drug addicts in the media do their game. I get it. When they, just when you think that they're against your political enemy, they're for your political enemy. They're just throwing dust in your eyes. Okay, next, let's go to some callers in the last 20 minutes of the Savage Nation. Marty on WFTL, what's on your mind, Marty? Hey, uh, Doctor, I, I got a question for you. This whole thing about Hillary, first of all, what does responsibility mean? That's number one. Number two, would Iran really drop a nuke on the Dome of the Rock to destroy Israel? Well, you're looking at it the wrong way. Iran just today said, Khamenei, the worst of them, the most Neolithic of them all, said Israel will not exist in 25 years. And of course they would use a nuke on Israel, but they wouldn't bomb Jerusalem because it has some uh, Islamic holy sites, such as the Dome of the Rock. But they would bomb Tel Aviv, wouldn't they? Yeah, they would. However, Israel is... But what, how, yeah, don't, don't, wait, let's not, don't, please, Marty, let's not do a however. Your question was set up to be rhetorical, meaning, of course, the, we shouldn't worry about Iran getting a nuke because they wouldn't use it on Israel, because they wouldn't want to destroy Islamic holy sites. But I just gave you the answer. There are no Islamic holy sites in Tel Aviv. Gotcha. But uh, still, I mean, you know, Israel is... All right, thanks for the call. That's all. We're not schmoozing in a deli over a little bagel with a toothpick now, with a little cream cheese and a mustache. No. National radio... Figure three football stadiums are listening to you, so we can't go with the toothpicks now. With a bagel and a schmear. With a little poppy seed in the, in the tooth. 855-407-282. Let's go to WTMA in South Carolina. Michael, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Hi. Uh, ISIS is just a plague and a cancer on this planet. It needs to be removed. Our president has had chances to have build coalitions with other countries, Japan, etc., that have witnessed extreme terrorism they've done, and they're not doing it. I think Russia... Oh, wait, my, my, hold, you see, you're making a mistake again, though. If you listen to the show, I've told you that ISIS is, is Obama's proxy army to overthrow Assad. Obama has, been, has a vendetta against Assad that goes on for years now. And they, ISIS, the reason the U.S. is not really doing anything is because they're our proxy army. And the U.S. is looking the other way about the collateral damage. So long as they overthrow Assad, Obama is willing to look the other way about the rapes, the kidnapping, and the slavery. It's ridiculous. And we could overthrow Assad. We overthrew Gaddafi. Look at the chaos that created. I think Russia... Well, you're a regular listener. Okay, it's, it's headache territory now already at 40 minutes into the third hour. When you start hearing your own show come back at you, it's, it's migraineville. Let's move on, 855-407-28. Of course, I told you the story about um, Gaddafi a thousand times. Who, who killed Gaddafi? Who joked about Gaddafi? Robert, do you have the famous Hillary tape? But don't play it yet. Gaddafi was a monster, just as Assad is a monster. But Gaddafi was a monster who knew how to control the other monsters. He knew what to do with them. He didn't worry about waterboarding. He cut their heads off, and he kept them in line, that's all. He knew the neighborhood he was in. They didn't care about the Geneva Convention. They followed the, the Libyan Convention, which is you try to overthrow me, I'll cut your head off and blow your village up. So that's how Gaddafi kept the peace in his own country. And he warned Hillary, and he warned all of them. He said, if you kill me after I am gone, this country will descend into warlords running the country, very much along the lines of Somalia. That's exactly what Hillary has wrought. So they, they, they surrounded Gaddafi with the, again, Arab Spring mentality, they thought that there'd be peace reigning in the streets of Libya. And now we have a refugee crisis unlike anything seen since World War II. Because what they did to Gaddafi, they're trying to do to Assad. Hillary Clinton again. Susan Rice again. Basically war criminals for what they're doing. Now, if there was a Hague, a real Hague, that wasn't run by their fray girlfriends, they're all one and the same. They all belong to the same Clavin. You have the soundbite? Robert, yes or no? Yeah. Okay, here's Hillary Clinton after they killed Gaddafi. Listen carefully. We came 
We saw <laughs> he died. <laughs> you hear the sorority of, of uh, the clave in there? We came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> the girls had fun. They killed a bad man. Not thinking beyond killing a man. Look what they created. Now they want to do the same thing in, in Syria. They know, you think they're that smart, don't you? You don't understand that some of the most powerful people on earth could be idiots. Okay, let's keep moving on. Michelle, KSFO, San Francisco. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi. Uh, it's the thing that the masks are off now. We can see the Russian-Iranian alliance that Obama has facilitated. He has been up to his neck in this. The prize is the Gulf oil. With Saudi Arabia and the Emirates eliminated, think of the oil that Russia and Iran will control. Obama doesn't give a damn about Assad. He could go the way of Gaddafi or anybody else. He's just another guy to, to be gone. And that's what the prize is, because think of the oil. Think of the money that they were control. Think about the, it's just like the great game there with Russia. Well, and so you, th and you think that once, uh, you think that Russia and Iran will take on Saudi Arabia? They don't really give a damn about Israel. All they no, have again, to do you're not, well, ma'am, listen to me. Are you implying that Russia and Iran will join in a military exercise against Saudi Arabia to take over their oil? Why not? Saddam Hussein almost. Well, now you're asking me, I asked you a question. Yes or no, is that what you're su suggesting? Yes, that Russia and Iran are forming an alliance to take over the Gulf oil states. Okay, well, let me, let me give you a little fact that you may not or may be aware of. I don't know how deeply embedded you are in this knowledge. But there's a new army, a Hashemite army, getting, getting ready to battle against ISIS. And it is a new army of 70,000 men. It's a Saudi army. And it, here's the strange part. It's King Abdullah who built this new Hashemite army of 70,000. And guess which armaments they're using? U.S. armaments. So which side is Obama really on? And is it the military-industrial complex at work again, wanting another war in order to speed up an arms race? Exactly right. And that's why Obama, now we know what he was making his little agreements with Putin when he gets reelected, I'll have more uh, wiggle room to do this. Because it, it, it's got to be an alliance because of the way that Obama has been handling this whole mess over there. Well, I don't agree with you because U.S. has been very, very loud, and I mean over the last few days, to not fly into Syria against Russia. You know that, right? Right. Well, and today Russia has gone around this, these U.S. threats and flown troops to Syria via Iran. They went into Iran, uh, into Syria, despite what Obama told them and, and what Kerry said. So you're implying that Obama and Kerry were just faking it? They really want Russia in Syria? I think how, is that, how does that make sense? How does that make sense what you just said? Obama has been crowing for years that Assad will go, will go, will go, will go. Assad must go, must go, must go. He's done everything he can to undermine Assad. He's even funded ISIS, and he has also not taken on ISIS. He has led ISIS rampage right up to Assad's palace doors. So now you're telling me that secretly Obama is backing uh, who? Who is he backing? Is he backing ISIS? Is he backing Assad? Is he backing Russia? Or is he backing Iran? Does he not, not know what he's doing? Is he that's, are these people that stupid? The girls who run this country, are they that dumb that they don't know what they're doing? Yeah. Yeah. I'll let you think about it. I'll let you think about it. It could be Susan Rice is a moron. It could be that Susan Rice couldn't work a cash register in, uh, in Target, in a Target store. That's what it could be. It could be these girls are complete morons, just vicious morons who have created a mess that the world hasn't seen in 50 years, 70 years for that matter, since World War II. Yeah, but meanwhile, I'll just write down what I said. Now we know uh, we're in a new place now where the rubber meets the rogue. I like that. I keep using it. I like those words. What do I mean now we have a new place where the rubber meets the rogue? Michael Savage said the rubber meets the rogue. It means the rubber of the monster Russian transports that are landing in Syria right now to back Assad now meet the rogue president called Barack Obama who's gotten away with murder. Because he thinks that Putin will back down the way that Boehner backed down. Because Obama thinks that since they both have blue eyes, they're both drunks and can be bamboozled. That's not a bad paragraph. Put it on YouTube. That's pretty good. I'm sure the sorority figures, you know, Putin's full of it.
He's just like Boehner. They both have blue eyes. They're both drunks. Never mind the airplanes and the nuclear submarine. We'll show them. We just beat everyone in America. We go around Congress. We got Obamacare through. We can spy on everyone. We can do anything we want. We'll push Putin around too. We'll show him. We'll show him those tough gals in the White House. See? See how far they've gotten? Well, let's see how far they get now. Okay, my friends, we're moving into the last few minutes of the show. I'm going to take a call, then we're going to take a break, then we're going to come back for the latest breaking news of this crazy world of ours. Russia ducks U.S. ban flying troops and equipment into Syria via Iran over air routes to Syria, marking the first serious Russian-U.S. showdown over Syria and Moscow's rapidly ongoing military buildup on behalf of Assad, the very man that Obama has had a vendetta against for several, for years now. For years he has wanted to overthrow Assad. He learned nothing about what he did to Gaddafi, doing it again. And if you think the Russians are bluffing, maybe you're right. All I know is that they just float, floated in the world's largest submarine, which has 200 nuclear warheads on it. And it got there in half the amount of time that was estimated for it to travel from the Russian seaport into the Dardanelles. The Dmitry Donskoy. 20 Bulava ICBMs carrying 6 to 10 Merv nuclear warheads. If you think this is all a bluff, hey, maybe you're right. I hope it's a bluff. Because a nuclear war is not what anyone wants. But, you know, I've studied World War I, and I've seen it start for similar idiotic reasons. Nobody to this day can tell me why World War I actually started, other than the ego of stupid old men. In fact, I spent a, a large part of this weekend in L.A. We were arguing over what started World War I. From the minute our plane landed, everyone was searching the Internet to find the, the reasons for World War I, and nobody could find the real reason for it. So assassination of Archduke uh, Ferdinand. I knew he was the Archduke of Austria-Hungary. That I knew. I remembered it from high school. A Serbian national killed him. So that gave Germany the pretext to invade Serbia. What happened then? Russia moved in to defend its ally Serbia, and that, that's how World War I began. Do you understand what I just said to you? Do you see history repeating itself? This dumb moron administration of ours is liable to trigger World War III. I'll be back, be here, be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So just yesterday... The great geniuses at the New York Times reported that the United States is moving to block Russian military buildup in Syria. Now today we find out the military built up in Syria. And everything that the girls figured out over a pizza at the White House, Russia went around. The sorority that runs Obama's White House, and oh, they can't fly in there. Are we going to block them from Bulgarian airspace? They flew in through Iran and Iraq right into Syria. And they're there now. And they're not backing down and they're not blinking. And what the long-term goal here is, is not that easy to understand. We know that Obama wants Assad gone. And we know that Putin wants Assad to stand as the best ch chance he has to, def to defend against radical Islamism from appearing again in Russia. Meanwhile, the Russians built housing for a 1,000 personnel. The largest nuclear submarine in the world has crossed the Dardanelles. Two giant Russian Condor transport planes bringing in supplies and equipment for an air base in southern Russia across Iran and Iraq to Latakia. So no matter what John Ketchup Kerry can get away with with the drunk Boehner, I guess they figure, as I said, Putin has blue eyes, Boehner has blue eyes, and they figure they're both drunks. Well, Mr. Uh, Kerry, let me tell you this about Putin. You know nothing about Putin. He's not John Boehner. This is the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. I'll be back tomorrow with God's will and your listenership. Be here.